Welcome to Windy, Wyoming. This is uh, one of these hunts I've been looking forward to because it's a really good unit in Wyoming. And even though the weather forecast is to be really, really hot, I'm gonna kill a bull on this hunt. And I hope that when this is all over, I'm standing in front of this same camera with a big smile saying, see, I told you there ain't nothing to this public land archery elk hunt. Right now I'm in Wyoming and I'm having more fun fighting the heat, fighting the wind, hiking these ridges. That's, that's the fun part of elk hunting. I mean, if coming out here and hunting was just boom or thwack, oh, I'm done, wipe your hands, let's get him into town, I'd be so bored with hunting, I'd probably have quit a long time ago. Opening morning, at least for me. In Wyoming, my favorite elk sign right there. Road closed. We'll see if we can find. One of the, I don't know if you'd call it intriguing or frustrating or whatever. One of the attributes of this unit is there's a lot of private and the public makes these long strings out into the private. And it's just hard to hunt. That, but that's part of why there's some nice bulls in here is a lot of people don't really want to hunt it. And they certainly don't want to hunt the portion out here where I've been hunting where it's a lot of public mixed with private. Kind of like I expected. Most of the elk, or at least the elk I can see, are out on the private. And the private's this big, flat area, a lot of good food and these mountains come in from the north and the public right down there on the boundary, that's the bedding cover because it's shade. <clears throat> and when it's shaded like that, the elk will feed all morning. Quick as the sun starts hitting them in about an hour or two, they'll start feeding their way up here and they'll bed right up in the north slopes here where they got some shade. And this is public, this is private. So. I'm going to let them get up here onto these hills then I'm going to make a big loop around them and I'm going to get right between them and the private so this afternoon when they decide they're going to get up and feed and start mingling back to the private, I'm going to be there to intercept them. It's three and a half miles along the boundary out to this corner and then, I don't know, three miles out to that corner to where now there's a little strip of, of state land out there. So just that was, as the crow flies, six and a half miles. I'm sure it was more than that. Just about there, I've went about four miles this morning. I gotta go up here a few hundred yards and then I can go straight north. And I saw a herd of elk out there, a big herd of elk, about a mile and a half north. So <clears throat> once I get out there, they're on state land. So it's a hell of a detour to get there. Gonna be five and a half, six miles to get there one way. Up. 
got my socks off, my shoes off. And uh, a bull came walking in. And Leupold's Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg is brought to you by Leupold Optics, Go Hunt Insider, changing how hunts are found, Kenetrek Boots for the trail less traveled, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, and by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, we call the game. socks off, my shoes off, and uh, a bull came walking in, and some cows, and then more cows, and a couple more bulls. And the one bull came walking right out to me to 18 yards, and just stood there broadside for a long time. You know, I could feel bad about that, but I don't really. To me, it was just a super cool experience. And the fact that he got away, well, he got away. It wasn't what I had in mind for what I wanted out of this hunt. Not, not in terms of size, don't get me wrong there, but just, I don't know, <laughs> to be sitting in the shade taking a nap and shoot a bull, I don't know. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I might, I might have shot him if I would have been more prepared, but the fact that I wasn't prepared and it was a chance encounter I had zero expectations of, yeah, not the end of the world. There'll be other out. There'll be other days, there'll be other opportunities. Teach me to be taking an afternoon nap. That was cool. It was really fun, really cool. I mean, to have that many cow elk, that many eyes come and look right at us, shows that if you have some sort of good outline breakup pattern like this Sitka Optifade is. If you're in the shade and you hold still, it's amazing how close elk will come to you and how you can get away with a lot. But, oh well, gonna go find some other ones hopefully. You know, a lot of people ask me, Randy, you kill most of your elk with a rifle, but you spend an awful lot of time archery hunting. And I do, 
because archery hunting is a lot of fun. It's a time of year when you can be out here when the elk are bugling in the rut. And quite honestly, I'm, I'm about getting closer to animals. I, I'm not necessarily about killing animals and filling tags. I know a lot of people are, but for me, the essence of hunting at this point in my life is about how close I can get. And I know some people are gonna be upset when I say this, but I've, I see too much I read too much of it, I see too much of it on TV of people, oh, I topped my personal best. I, I had them at 600 yards, but I moved back to 750 because that's my personal best. I just, that, that just sickens me. Anyone who would back up to take a longer shot should lose their hunting privileges. It's that simple. You, have, you don't have the respect for that animal that you should have. It's all about me, me, I, I. And I don't care how pissed off you get about it. That's just the fact of it. When they're coming off the hill, they can look down and see you, even though I had some willows in that creek bottom. So you're really in a tough situation, and the wind was not good. And one really big bull came out and pushed his cows up on this bench. That bull was probably, I don't know, 150, 200 yards onto the private by the time I snuck up there. But it's just, it, elk hunting, especially archery elk hunting, is a function of just trying and trying and trying. Do different things all the time. And you never know when one of them's gonna work. And over the course of time, you, you sort of figure out, okay, these things seem to work quite a bit. So you, you do that more than the things that seem to fail quite a bit.
fun while that lasted. But we got a few miles to cover before the sun. Well, we're not gonna cover them all before the sun goes down, let's put it that way. We got a few miles to cover by headlamp. Easy to call in cows. If you want to earn your keep, call in bulls. That's when it gets hard. Leupold's Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg is brought to you by Hawa Precision Rifles and Barreled Actions, Sitka Specialized Outdoor Wear and Equipment. Hunt by Onyx Maps, Land Ownership Hunting Maps. Nosler, when your tag is drawn, make it count. Load Nosler up front. And by the Boone and Crockett Club. An early season hunt like this. Uh, this is what I'd call pre-rut, early September. You got such warm temperatures that you have to come in well before sunup. I've already been on the trail for over a half hour, and my goal is to get about two to three miles out there by the time the sun is up. And that's your only chance where you're gonna hear much. Um, the last couple days, they're done bugling within half hour of the sun getting over the horizon and they don't start again until about seven o'clock with sunset being 7.30. So you really gotta get up a little earlier, plan on hunting a little bit later and keep your fingers crossed that you get some luck because this, is, this warm weather, today it's supposed to get 86 degrees. This warm weather in early September can be one of the toughest times to kill a bull. But can't change the weather, so I'm gonna go kill one. crazy I've been hunting elk now for what 27 years 25 years and still when I see a bull like that out in the middle of nowhere it's exciting it just instantly your senses just go on overload and you're trying to figure out where's he going what's he doing how do I get there Everything's going according to plan. Camera's set up, me and the other camera move down here, and I can hear the bull bugling, and I stand up and I look, and I can see his antlers, and he's coming down. He's got a little gully, and then he's gotta come up, and he'll be on this grassy bench, and I glass that and range it, and I'm having like 20, 25 yard shots.
I look up bedded at the top of this little grassy bench are four cows and they see us and boy they're gone. I had him right down in this bottom but there's no shooting lane and there's no filming lane. He's like 35 yards away. And if, with the sun right here if the camera stood up and I stood up he was looking right at us. I didn't know there were a bunch of cows up here. I thought he was all by himself. And then when I stepped into a shooting lane, those cows saw me and they bolted. Oh man, after all these days of hiking and doing everything we can, trying our damnedest, I screw it up. If I would have stayed back where I was behind that spruce tree, I would have had to picked my shooting lanes. I wouldn't have had much for shooting lanes, but I sure wouldn't have scared those, those four cows and that bull would have been right in my grill. And uh, I might be sitting here telling you the story about how you field dress a bull elk. like the elk one here in Wyoming, which any of you who archery elk hunt on public land know that's not unexpected. So, could be worse. You know, I get to come back here in November with a rifle on this same tag. Me and my buddy Pat Schmidt, we both have tags. He's coming out from Wisconsin. We're gonna be back here in November with rifles and we're gonna get even. <laughs>